I just learned some new tricks for the Apple TV. But in this video, I'm going to show you 15 tips for making the most of your Apple TV. I want to show you some of the newer features with TVO 17, like finding your remote and using a VPN, some secret accessibility settings that's going to make your watching experience even better, using the Control Center, HomeKit cameras, FaceTime, and go over multiple gestures and Siri commands with your Apple TV remote you might not know of. And yes, at the end, I want to show you some shortcuts too. Number one, if you have a newer Apple TV 4K and you've updated to TVO 17, Go to the Remote app from the Control Center on your iPhone, and you can choose a new Find Remote feature. This way, if you've lost the remote in the sofa cushions or somewhere in the room, you can tap the Find option, and it's going to go into this finding mode, letting you know whether the remote is near and let you know how close you get. As you get closer to that remote, it's actually going to let you know that you're here right on top of it. Now, that's definitely a cool feature and might help you find the remote in the room, but if it's lost in the sofa cushions, it'd be helpful if you can make a sound, and there's no way to do that with the Apple TV remote. That's why tip number two is I got this inexpensive silicone case for my Apple TV remote, and inside the case, there is a place to put an AirTag. So yes, I AirTag my own Apple TV remote. This way I can do precision finding and have it make a sound. So now if I need to find my Apple TV remote, I can go to the Find My app, choose Find Nearby, and this will actually be precision finding. But even more useful, I can have my remote play a sound. All right, number three, you can take FaceTime calls right on your Apple TV and use your iPhone in continuity mode for those video calls. Here you can select your own account to add your phone as the camera, or you can even scan this QR code with any iPhone in the room, as long as it's on the same Wi-Fi network, and use that phone for continuity camera. I'll choose my own phone. You'll see this notification pop up on the iPhone connected to that Apple ID. You can accept. And now your phone is being used for continuity camera. You can now choose a contact to FaceTime here on the left-hand side, and also do things like disable center stage, you can enable portrait mode, turn on or off reactions, and more. Number four, you might already know this, but again, in the control center, you can have your Apple TV remote here, and then control your remote all from your iPhone. This also works on iPad and Apple Watch. If I choose this Apple TV, I can now swipe up and down, mute and unmute there, put it to sleep using the power button, and I have my TV, menu, and play and pause controls here. But you can also use the volume buttons on your iPhone to control the volume of your receiver or your TV. To do that, on your Apple TV, go to the Settings app, go down to Remotes and Devices, and here you have some settings for the physical Apple TV remote. But where it says Home Theater Control, for the control TVs and receivers, make sure this is turned on. And now the volume buttons, both on the Apple TV remote, and on your iPhone will adjust the volume of your audio device. All right, number five, with tvOS 17, there was a new control center introduced. If I long press the menu button on the Apple TV remote, I go to control center. Here you have quick access to Wi-Fi, do not disturb. You can choose your audio output device, whether that's HomePods or maybe AirPods, and you can even do a sleep timer for the Apple TV. There's also quick access to parental restrictions, accessibility, and game controllers. I'm gonna get into some of those in a second. But if I go over, the next tip is actually getting HomeKit cameras right here on Apple TV. If you have multiple HomeKit cameras like I do, you can now see all of them at a glance right here on the Apple TV. I have cameras in my garage, around the side of my house, and my doorbell camera. Then you can actually go in and see one of these cameras live. You can put it in picture-in-picture -picture mode so you can see it as you're browsing around the Apple TV. And you can even control other HomeKit devices in the room where that camera is at. Let's say I'm here in the garage. I can actually turn on my garage lights from the Apple TV right here using the controls on these devices. I can even close my garage door right here from the Apple TV and it will filter the devices to just show you the ones here in the same room with the camera. Next, with tvOS 17, you actually got the options to use VPN apps directly on the Apple TV. If I go to the App Store, I can now search for VPN apps. And this is one of the nice things if you're using your iPhone as the remote for your Apple TV, anytime you have to type, it'll just bring up the full keyboard here on my iPhone and I can just type my search term. If I search for VPN, you'll see there's lots of options here. This video is not sponsored by anybody, but I'll just use this app right here because I already have an account. Now I can open that VPN app, sign in. And the nice thing is here, you actually get access to your iCloud passwords. So if you're in a login field for a specific app, you can just autofill your email and password. Makes it super easy to sign in if you're using your iPhone as a remote. There is a setup process allowing a VPN configuration on the Apple TV. You can try to block trackers and ads. And here I can choose another country if that's where I want streaming services or apps to look like I'm tuning in from. So here I chose the UK London. You'll see that the VPN in the upper right hand corner is now enabled. And now if I go to different streaming apps, I might see different content because it appears as though I'm watching from that country. If I open the control center again and you're connected to a VPN, you'll also see that up here and you can quickly disconnect right from the control center. Next, let's talk about app restrictions. 
if this is an Apple TV, maybe in a family room, and you want to be able to restrict certain apps. You won't find as granular settings as on other Apple devices. But if I go to Settings, General, and then to Restrictions, here you can set a restrictions passcode. And one of the improvements in tvOS 17 is you can actually unlock restrictions just by scanning your biometric Face ID or Touch ID from an iPhone on the same iCloud account. Here you can enable restrictions and then allow certain users to bypass restrictions with their device. You can see I can allow that, I can allow it for my significant other, but my children cannot unlock the restrictions. You can also allow purchases and rentals or restrict it, same for in-app purchases. And then you can set the age limits for specific apps and even ratings for movies, whether you want clean or explicit music and podcasts and more. Different apps will have different age restrictions. If you set it to something like nine plus, then you'll need to approve apps like YouTube and Netflix, HBO Max. Now, if I try to open an app like YouTube, it's gonna ask to approve on my device. If my device is already unlocked, I can just tap approve and it will let me in or I can scan my face ID if my device was locked and now I'm in the app. Next, there's a bunch of hidden settings in accessibility on the Apple TV. Number one, if you're on the TV app, you'll notice that videos autoplay in this big banner. You can actually disable that in the accessibility settings. I'll go to the settings app, go back to the main menu, and now we're gonna go down to accessibility. From here, I can go down to motion and you'll see autoplay video previews is actually a toggle. If I turn this off, and go back to the main home screen, now it is not going to autoplay those previews no matter how long I stay there. It'll scroll through whatever it's trying to show you at the top, but no videos will autoplay. Next tip, there's actually more settings here in accessibility that can also give you quick access in Control Center. For instance, maybe you want the Apple TV to be really dim. Maybe if you're watching in a very dim environment, but you can't get your TV brightness down far enough. Well, you can enable light sensitivity. I'll enable this. You can change the intensity to 25% or go even further to make it really dim. We'll go to about 50% to really see the difference. Now that I've changed that, I can go all the way down in the accessibility settings to the accessibility shortcut. Here, I can enable certain things like light sensitivity that will be enabled in the control center. Now that that's checked, I can go back to my home screen and from the control center, I can go to accessibility and turn light sensitivity on or off to that dimmer setting from the control center whenever I want. I can also go back to settings and you can add things to that control center shortcut like closed captions. Now I can hold the TV button, bring up the control center, go to accessibility and turn captions on or off quickly from here. Now you can also choose just one of these options and that will actually toggle on or off when you triple click the back button, which the Apple TV calls the menu button. So if I have closed captions enabled as my triple click shortcut, now when I'm watching something, I can triple click the back button and closed captions are now turned off. This is not gonna work in every app because different streaming apps use different video players. But if you're watching in the stock Apple TV app, purchased movies, rented movies, great way to quickly turn on or off closed captions with a triple click. You can also access this via the control center, go down to accessibility and turn captions on or off that way. Next for tip 12, let's go over some gestures you can do on your Apple TV remote. First up, if you double click the TV button, you'll go into multitasking mode and you can jump to a previously used app. Also, if you need to force quit an app, double click on the TV button, go to that app and then swipe up on the pad and you'll force quit that app. If it's frozen, you can reload it, reopen it. If you need to restart your Apple TV, you can actually hold the back button and the TV button for a few seconds and your TV will automatically restart. If you're in the Apple TV app and you wanna quickly get to your home screen with your grid of apps, just tap and hold on the back button and you'll go back to that home screen automatically. This also works if you're just watching something, tap and hold on that back button and you'll return to the home screen. Also, if you wanna skip forward or backward just a few seconds, you can just tap on the left and right buttons on the remote and you'll go forward and back 10 seconds. You can also scrub by clicking on the center button and then going around the circle, either counterclockwise or clockwise, and you can quickly scrub that way. That's in addition to just swiping backwards and forwards. Number 13, there's a bunch of Siri commands you might not be aware of. You can use Siri to search, but you can also use it to jump to a specific time code in the movie. I'll hold the button and say, jump to one hour. And now it automatically went to the one hour timestamp. You can also say something like, play from the beginning and it'll go to the very beginning of the movie. You can also tell it to skip forward or backwards a certain number of minutes, like rewind two minutes, fast forward 10 minutes. If you miss something that a character said, you can also say, what did they just say? And your Apple TV will automatically go back a few seconds, turn on captions and will turn captions off after a few moments. You can also ask it to just turn on the captions, turn on captions and they'll be on and I can ask it to turn it off, turn off captions. Remember, we also have the triple click back button to turn it on and I can triple click to turn them off. All right, number 14, 
If I press up, of course I can manage the captions and even the audio track here, but there's also a picture in picture mode. This works when you're watching something. I can put it in picture in picture, go home. Once in picture in picture mode, you can press the TV button for more options. You can move it around the screen. If you want the picture in picture in a different corner, you can close it out or go back to full screen mode. If I press and hold the back button, I can go to my home screen, do what I need to do. And if I want to access the picture in picture again, just press the TV button and you can make it full screen again. All right, at number 15, there are a ton of shortcuts that you can use with your Apple TV. You can do simple things like playing and pausing an Apple TV just by running a shortcut. This is great to use maybe with the action button or a back tap on your iPhone. You can also program a certain amount of minutes to go forward or back and then run that as a shortcut. If I want to jump to the screensaver on my Apple TV, that's a shortcuts action you could do. And there's even shortcuts for opening a specific app on your Apple TV from your iPhone. Here's that restrictions again. I can tap it, approve it from my unlocked iPhone, and I'm in the YouTube app. You can also create a shortcut to turn on the captions temporarily again. You can skip backward 30 seconds, turn on captions, wait 15 or 30 seconds, and then turn the captions off. If I run this shortcut, it'll go backwards 30 seconds on an app TV, turn on the captions temporarily, and once that shortcut is done running, after that wait command, it'll turn the captions off. I have an entire video with more shortcuts for your Apple TV. I'll put that video right up here and the links down in the description. And if you want tips for your other Apple devices like iPhone, best Mac apps, widgets for your iPhone, I'll put one of those videos right up here and some links down in the description. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel before you go, hit that like button. And if you have some recommendations or tips for Apple TV and other devices I haven't covered yet, leave comments below this video. We'd love to cover it in a future video. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.